Um, hopefully you're having a better day than I'm having. Cause I got two videos in the pipeline and the, oh boy, do they make me want to die. Um, they're taking a lot of effort. You'll see them hopefully in a few days, but, oh, anyways, um, with the last in this installment, uh, an Adam Grant brought up a, Adam Ward, Adam Ward brought up uh, a possible uh, oversight in the language, and he was definitely on to something. Um, there was a little extra step that needed to be done, but he definitely found another uh, oversight. So let's go over this real quick, and then I'll cover the details afterwards. Uh, we have a subtype of integer called predicated integer, and it has a static predicate that specifically says its values can only be 3, 5, 7, and 11. So if you try to assign it any value that isn't one of those, you will get an exception. Now we have a record type which contains a field of that predicated integer. There's nothing else in here, so essentially it's just the predicated integer. And then we have a variable r of that record type that we just use its default initialization entirely. Um, saying this suppresses an error message that you would normally get about how you're reading a value that hasn't been assigned, even though it's been initialized. Uh, that's sort of a safety measure, and it is actually a great thing that they do that. That is something I think Ida gets very right that other languages don't. Um, and then we just access that value. Now, you would expect, given the predicate rules, that it should be one of those values, or that you should at least get some kind of error message here. And, um, well, let's build this, and run it, and you can see that we got a zero, which is definitely not correct. And importantly, we never got an error or warning about any of this. I say this is a clear oversight because if we try to do that same thing without the record wrapping it up, uh, I don't know if it's going to complain in this instance because, oh, no, it does. Uh, so you can see that it's saying that it's never read and also never assigned. And that's normally what you would get. Um, this specifically shows off the issue with the resolution rules. Um, not resolution rules, but oh, where was, what, what, what section of the ARM was this in? I'm drawing a blank. It doesn't particularly matter what it's called because it's what happens, why this is allowed to happen. Um, basically, it's never actually checked against that predicate, except when you're assigning to it. The initialization doesn't ever factor that in. And I mean, typically speaking, you're not just working with values of a single type. You're usually using some kind of structure, whether that's a, a record or a protected object or a task object. You're probably using some type of collected data. And you clearly have to be very careful in these instances about using the others is default clause because it just doesn't take that into consideration. Feeling good about those code contracts? I don't have a particular video planned for, or for a particular topic planned for the next in this series. I, I don't know. I got a few other leads I need to track down and implement. Um, you know, I, I want to make sure that these actually happen. And as you can see, I'm also trying to collect them in a repo. Um, 
Hopefully I've been remembering to add that link uh, in the video descriptions, but if not, it's at a-exploits. Uh, you can easily find it on my page anyways. Um, so yeah, until the next one, have a good god. You know what I mean.